Installing fence panels can be a real time saver. These prefabricated fence panels come in a variety of styles and colors and are available in wood, vinyl, composite, or metal. The panels typically come in either six or eight foot widths, and in this video, we're going to install a traditional dog ear panel wood fence using brackets. Our fence will be installed on relatively flat ground, but if your terrain is sloped, install the panels using the step-down approach. Each panel will be leveled as it is installed, and the sections will step down according to the slope. If you choose, you can secure the panels directly to the front edge of the post on center using either galvanized nails or screws. If you consider yourself handy, this project will take about 8 to 10 hours, not counting drying time for the cement used to set the post. Of course, much will depend on the length of the fence you're installing. Remember, before you begin any fencing project, you should check local codes and ordinances and call 811 to have any buried utilities marked. Good luck with your fencing project and thanks for shopping at the Home Depot. Begin by driving stakes into the ground where you plan to set the two end posts. Tie mason's line around each stake and pull the line taut. Attach a line level to the string and adjust the line as needed until it's level. This mason's line will be a guide for the bottom of the fence panel, so be sure to level it two to three inches off the ground to prevent wood rot. Determine the distance between the line posts needed for your particular panels and mark the locations with either tape or a marker. Then mark the post locations on the ground using spray paint or chalk. If your fence will have corners, tie a line to the corner post and unfurl it along the planned adjacent fence line. Check that the angle is 90 degrees using the 3-4-5 rule. Measure and mark one line 3 feet from the corner, then measure and mark the adjacent line 4 feet from the corner. The lines are square if the distance between the two marked spots is 5 feet. If the angle isn't square, adjust one of the lines until it is. When digging the holes for posts, always dig them three times the width of the post and to a depth one-third to one-half the post's length. When setting wood posts, it's best to dig down an additional six inches to allow for gravel backfill. This gravel will help drain water away from the base of the post, which will help prevent rotting. Always use pressure-treated pine, redwood, or cedar posts because they're rot-resistant. The first end post will serve as an anchor for the rest of the fence line, so setting it level and plumb is critical. Once the post is plumb, support it with temporary braces. End posts, gate posts, and corner posts must be set in concrete. To stand up to wind effects, the line posts should be set in concrete as well. Mix the concrete according to the manufacturer's instructions and stir it with a piece of scrap wood as you pour it into the hole. This will help eliminate air bubbles, which can weaken the concrete when it's dry. For more detailed information on setting posts, please watch our Installing Fence Posts video at video.homedepot.com and click on the Fencing section. Fence panels can be fastened to posts in one of two ways. They can be secured on center to the face of the posts using nails or screws, or they can be attached to the inside edge of the posts using fasteners. If you choose the more popular fastener approach, Measure the distance from the bottom of the fence panel to the lower rail, then the distance for the next two rails. Measure up from the mason's line and mark these same measurements onto the inside edge of the corner post. These lines mark where the bottoms of the fastener should be installed. If you wish to have the panel flush with the neighbor side of the posts, recess the fasteners the thickness of the pickets. If you plan on attaching a trim board along the top of the pickets and flush with the posts, you'll need to account for the thickness of this board also. Fence etiquette calls for the rail side to face the builder's property, leaving the picket side to face your neighbor. Secure the brackets to the posts at the marked locations using galvanized nails, then flatten the bottom flanges on the upper brackets. Place the first line post in the ground and temporarily brace it. Mark the same fastener measurements you used for the corner post onto this first line post. Attach the fasteners to this first line post and hammer down the flanges on the two upper brackets until they're flat. The panel can then be slipped into the upper fasteners and rest on the bottom flange of the lower fasteners. The panel should fit the post snugly. Adjust the panel until it's level and plumb, and then secure the panel with screws driven through the outside of all the brackets. 
By leveling the panel and making it plumb, you'll also be ensuring the two posts are level and plumb. Unlike installing component fences, you should hold off backfilling and setting the posts until all the panel sections are in place. This will allow you to make any small adjustments needed when installing the remaining panels. Continue installing panels in the same manner down the fence line. Check that each new post is level, plumb, and brace it. Be sure to line each post up against the mason's line to ensure the fence line is straight. It's important to measure the distance between rails on each panel as you install them. These measurements may vary slightly between panels. When all the fence sections have been installed, it's time to set the posts. Set the end posts and any gate posts in concrete. When installing a fence with high wind resistance, the line posts should be set in concrete as well. Once the concrete is hardened, mark one end post to the desired height using a nail. Tie a mason's line around the nail and stretch the line taut to the other end post and level the line. Mark the post and tap a nail into this end post. If you're installing a long line of fence, work on no more than three or four posts at a time. Stretching it farther than that can cause sagging in the line. Mark each post where the line hits it. Each post can now be trimmed to this height using a circular saw. Clamp a carpenter square to each post to help guide your saw along the marked line. Most circular saws won't cut through the thickness of the 4x4 posts in one pass. You'll need to clamp the square to the other side of the post to cut through it once again and remove the excess post. When all the fence sections have been completed, you can stop here and enjoy your new dog-eared fence, or you can continue on and add decorative touches to the top of the fence. For this fence, we're going to add a fascia board, top cap, and post caps. The fascia board will consist of a 1x4 positioned over the tops of the pickets. This fascia board should be flush with the top of the picket line. Toenail the board into the posts and drive screws through the outside of the board into the pickets. Be sure not to use screws that are too long. This fascia board should also be flush with the front of the posts. A 1x6 plank can then be attached to the top of the pickets and fascia board using screws. This will result in a 2-inch overhang. Lastly, attach post caps with small screws or nails to help preserve the posts and add a decorative touch. These caps come in a variety of materials and designs and offer many options, including caps with solar-powered lights. If you're ready to take on this project, here are the tools and materials you'll need to complete the job. When properly maintained, wood fences can last for many years. To help prolong the life of your fence, it should be cleaned and sealed periodically. Before applying a protective sealant, clean the fence with a product that kills mildew as well as removes stains. Once dry, apply a high-quality protective sealant according to the manufacturer's instruction and be sure to coat all exposed surfaces. Installing fence panels can be a real time saver. These prefabricated fence panels come in a variety of styles and colors and are available in wood, vinyl, composite, or metal. The panels typically come in either six or eight foot widths, and in this video we're going to install a traditional dog ear panel wood fence using brackets. Our fence will be installed on relatively flat ground, but if your terrain is sloped, Install the panels using the step-down approach. Each panel will be leveled as it is installed and the sections will step down according to the slope. If you choose, you can secure the panels directly to the front edge of the post on center using either galvanized nails or screws. 